Hello, and welcome to the first of two ArtCam 2012 video tutorials highlighting the Texture Flow tool. This first tutorial will explain the various settings and features present in the Texture Flow menu. Here I have opened a model of a Chinese dragon. If I change to the 3D view, I can see the reliefs present. In my project menu, I can see I have two relief layers and two vector layers. By selecting View Active Relief Layer, I can see that nothing is currently on the Scales layer. The purposes of the two vector layers will be explained at a later point in time. Currently, my dragon relief does not look very realistic. Its back is far too smooth and does not look very reptilian. The Texture Flow tool will allow me to paste a specific object, either a clip art or a vector, multiple times within a boundary. For example, I can paste grass multiple times within a boundary to create the look of a field, or I can paste leaves on top of a tree. To texture the back of my dragon, I will need a clip art to paste. If I open my Relief Clip Art library, I can see I have five dragon scales to choose from. For this tutorial, I will choose Dragon Scale 5. However, if you are following along, feel free to choose whichever dragon scale you prefer. I need to resize my clip art so it will fit on the dragon's back. If I drag it into the center, I can use the menu on the right hand side to change the height and width. I can click Maintain Aspect Ratio to decide whether I want width and height to scale with each other, width, height and Z range to scale with each other, or none of them to scale with each other. In this tutorial, I will scale width with height. The height I desire for my scale is 4mm. I would like to independently input a Z range of about 1mm. If I click Apply, these changes will be made. I can now close my Relief Clip Art library and open my Texture Flow tool, which is located in the Fill Tools toolbar. Here you will notice a number of settings which will each be explained in detail. The first button, the Set Object button, allows me to decide which object, either clip art or vector, I would like to be pasted as the texture. So, since my clip art is already selected, I can simply click Set Object to set it as the object. You will notice in the Project menu on the right hand side, one of the vector layers is called Flow Vector. The Flow Vector is what the object will be pasted along. If the Flow Vector curves, then the object will be pasted around the curve. The flow vector can also be a closed vector, which we will see in the second texture flow tutorial. The object will be pasted either side of the flow vector within a boundary, and if it is closed, meet in the middle. I can select my red flow vector for the dragon and then set flow vector to set it as the flow vector. You will notice that arrows have appeared on my flow vector. This shows you which direction the object will be pasted in. So the scales in this instance will be pasted from the tip of the tail to the top of the neck. The next section of the texture flow menu allows you to set a number of presets. For example, if you wanted to paste fur on a wolf's back, you could select medium fur and then apply and this will change the texture flow settings to suit your current needs. In order to reset the form, simply click Reset. Texture Flow allows three flow styles Flow Along, Mirror Along and Sweep Around. The image to the left of the drop-down menu gives a rough idea as to what each setting does. Flow Along means the object will be pasted in the same orientation either side of the flow vector. 
mirror along means the object will be mirrored in the flow vector. And sweep around means that the object will flow one way on one side of the flow vector and the other way on the other side of the flow vector. In this tutorial I will select flow along as my flow style. The boundary options section at the bottom of the menu allows me to change my clipping style. Before I calculate a texture flow I must select my limiting boundary. The trim option means that once the texture reaches the boundary it will be cut at that point. The delete option means that if a pasted object would overlap the boundary at all it will not be pasted. The keep option means that if an object would overlap the boundary it will be pasted as the final iteration. I will choose to have a clipping style of trim for this tutorial. I will leave the rest of the settings as they are for now. As I said previously before I calculate the texture I must select a boundary. This must be a closed vector or group of closed vectors. So I'll select my boundaries and click calculate. If I zoom in on the dragon's back I can see what my texture looks like. The overall effect is promising however the scales are much too spaced out and much too uniform to be reptilian. The next setting in the texture flow tool I will show you is a long flow vector. This section allows you to set how close you want the objects to be to each other along the flow vector. For example, if I set my spacing at 50% of width, the next scale would start halfway through the previous one. I can also set a range of values for this to give a slightly more randomized look. In this instance, I will select 40% to 50% of the object's width. I will now demonstrate what effect this has by deleting my current relief layer selecting the boundary and then calculating. If I zoom into the back now you'll see that the scales are much closer together. However this is still not the effect we are looking for. The next section is away from flow vector. This follows the same lines as the previous section however it affects spacing perpendicular to the flow vector. So in this instance I will select a spacing of 50 to 70 percent of height and see what effect that has on my scales. I will again delete my relief layer, select my boundaries and calculate. The range of values that I placed should have given a slightly more randomized look and if I zoom in I can see that the scales are closer together now and a less uniform. The final section is randomize object. At the moment each scale that is pasted in the texture is exactly the same as the original clip art. However I can change the size of a pasted object or its orientation using this section. For example if I entered the values 50 and 100 into the scale section any particular object which was pasted could be between 50 or 100 percent of the size of the original object. This can give a much more realistic and randomized feel to textures that you create. It is advisable however to scale around 100 percent so that the spacings from the previous sections are still valid. So in this instance I will select 90 and 110 percent as my scaling limits. If I set my angle variance to 15 degrees this means that my object could be anywhere between 0 and 15 degrees from its original position clockwise or between 0 and 15 degrees from its original position anti-clockwise. I can now see what effect this has had on my texture. 
If I zoom into the same position, I can see that my scales are now much more randomized. You may have noticed two checkboxes, one in the along flow vector section and one in the away from flow vector section. Vary scale allows you to set the average size of the objects that you paste at a specific point along the flow vector. For example, if I set 200% at my start point and 10% at my end point, this will mean that the scales on my dragon will be twice the clip art's original size at the tip of the tail, which is the start of my flow vector, and 10% of the original size at the end of my flow vector, the neck. In between these two points, the sizes will blend into each other. So I would expect at the center of the flow vector to have roughly the original size of the clip art. In this instance, I will set the scales at the tip of the tail to be 30% of their original size, scaling through to 100% further up the tail, then to 130% at the top of the back where I want the scales to be the largest, all the way through to 100% at the top of the neck. My start and end point have defined positions on the flow vector. However, my texture flow tool does not yet know where I want position 1 and position 2 to be. So I can click on set position 1 and set it at a certain point, and set position 2 and set it let's say at the top of the back. You will see next to the button to set position 3 there is the word invalid. This means that whatever value is in the corresponding scaling box will not be used in this calculation. If I select vary scale and angle this allows me to alter the size of my object as it moves away from the flow vector. For example, if I set a value of 97%, each iteration of the object which is pasted away from the flow vector will be 97% the size of the previous one. This tool works in conjunction with the previous vary scale tool for a long flow vector. So at point 2, a scale will be 130% of its original size and the next iteration outwards from the flow vector will be 97% the size of that. I can also set a limit. I can also set a limit which my scales will not be smaller than, which I will choose to be 60 in this instance. I can also change the orientation of my object as it moves away from the flow vector, either by a positive angle or a negative angle. Here I will choose minus 2 degrees, so with every iteration of the object it will turn inwards 2 degrees. I can now, for the final time, delete my relief layer, select my boundary vectors and click calculate. If I zoom in to my dragon I can see that there are large scales at the tip of the back and much smaller scales at the tip of the tail. I can also see that my scales are much more realistic than I had them initially. Have a play around with the functionality of the various settings to gain a better understanding of what each one does. Also be sure to watch the second texture flow tutorial where a texture will be created for both the front and back reliefs of a starfish. Thank you very much for watching this ArtCam 2012 video tutorial. It's been a pleasure.